This is the Game Boy Color Lite. It is a standard Game Boy Color using a backlit LCD modification called the Freckle Shack. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own Game Boy Color Lite and where to order the parts. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. So I've had a Game Boy Color laying around for the past few years that's been broken. It doesn't work well. Uh, it's pretty scratched up and the speaker on it is completely blown out and I've been meaning to do a modification or a housing change um, but I never really got around to it uh, but I decided I was going to go ahead and make that change uh, and I figured I may as well make a video about it. So not only am I going to swap out the speaker but we're also going to replace the LCD with a backlit LCD. So what we're going to need first off is we're going to need a second housing and I just picked up one of these uh, smoky clear uh, replacement housings. We're also going to need a replacement speaker and there's a few different types of speakers you can get. I just got one of the standard the half watt speakers but there are one watt speakers if you want something with a little bit more kick. We're going to need the Freckle Shack kit which is going to be ordered directly from Benven and I'll provide all the links in the description down below. It comes with two different boards. You've got an LCD conversion board and a new LCD screen. We also are going to need a lens for the new case that we've got. This one right here is what came with the case, but we're not actually going to use this one. We're going to go ahead and get one that was specially built for this LCD. This is uh, made by Jelly Belly Customs out of the United Kingdom. And on their website, you can actually order a whole ton of different things. Uh, they do custom consoles and parts and things like that. But if you go on their website, they are going to have all the different options. The reason why you're going to want to buy a lens from them is because the screen on this is a di slightly different size than the original Game Boy screen. So you're going to want one that fits properly around the screen. This is going to fit nicely around the new LCD screen without showing any of the silver uh, framing for that LCD screen. And here it is just up close. As you can see, it is a slightly different shape than the original Game Boy. Next, we're gonna get a replacement rear label, and that's actually gonna come with the Freckle Shack kit as well, which was really nice to see. We're gonna need a couple screwdrivers, a tri-wing screwdriver, as well as a Phillips head screwdriver. We're also gonna need some Kapton tape, and this is gonna be important so that way we can insulate the electronic components on our boards. We're going to need our soldering iron only if you're doing the speaker upgrade, otherwise it's not necessary. We're going to need an X-Acto knife or some sort of uh, craft knife. And finally, we're going to need a pair of precision side cutters. So first, we're going to go ahead and grab our Game Boy Color and we're going to remove the six screws along the back with our Y-tip screwdriver. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the back shell. It should just pop right on out. We're just going to set that aside. And we've got three screws that we need to remove that are attaching the board to the front of the shell. We're going to go ahead and remove those now. Next, we need to release the pins that are holding the LCD ribbon in place. You just got to pop them up and then you can wiggle that uh, ribbon completely free. And that's it. We can take the board and we can set it aside for now. And we no longer need the front plate. So first we're gonna go ahead and do the speaker repair. There's just simply two wires that are attaching to the speaker. We need to remove those speaker wires and attach them to the new leads on the new speaker. It doesn't really matter what order they go in. You just gotta make sure that you get a good solder connection from the wire to the pad. Now we just have to rewire these up. And there we go. Our two wires are in, our speaker should be good to go. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and flip our board right around. And what you're gonna notice is that there's a bunch of pins right over here that are all sticking out a little bit. This is why we need the side cutters. We need to cut these pins down as flush as possible. Otherwise, the other boards are not gonna fit. So we're gonna go ahead and trim those up and try to make them again as flush as possible. Feels pretty flush, so we're able to move on to the next step now. We're gonna go ahead and grab our Kapton tape now, and we're just gonna cut a little strip and we're gonna stick it over top of those component parts that we just trimmed. And the reason we wanna do that is just to make sure that we don't have any bridging between the board that we're gonna place over top of it and those pins that we just snipped. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the front plate of our new shell, and we can just go ahead and throw our buttons in here. This is nice and easy, really quick. You can either uh, move over the ones from the previous shell, or if you wanna use the new ones, you can do that as long as they're good quality. Don't forget to attach the magnetic pads over top of the buttons just to make sure everything works properly. Next, we need to trim a little bit of the front shell housing where the LCD goes. All we have to do is just apply a little bit of pressure to this little section here on both sides and then we should be able to snap it out. I find that it makes things a lot easier when you score along the bottom edge a few times just so that way you can loosen the plastic up a little bit and you want to make sure that you do both sides. Now we can go ahead and just apply some pressure and it should snap. Perfect and it's a nice clean snap. You can always go back in there and clean it up with an X-Acto knife if you need to, but for the most part it should come out nice and clean. Now we're going to grab the LCD converter board from the Freckle Shack kit and we're going to apply a little bit more Kapton tape to these connectors right over here. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the protective layer on the new LCD screen that we got with our Freckle Shack kit. The flex cable should be able to be folded up right behind the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and pop our screen into the housing and we're going to use these two spacers that are provided with the Freckle Shack kit as well. The larger one goes on the left side and the smaller one goes on the right. It'll be a tight fit, but they do fit perfectly. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the top of your screen is pressed as far up into the shell as possible. Next, we're gonna go ahead and attach our LCD to our new converter board. The ribbon should slide in really nicely. Just make sure that you get it attached all the way through and then snap it down to keep it in place. Next, we should be able to fold our converter board over and it should fit nicely right within the space of that LCD. Now we just have to make sure we put on our IR lens and our power button switch before we get too far. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our new LCD converter board to the main board of the Game Boy. Again, this is nice and easy. You just slide the ribbon in place, and then we're gonna go ahead and lock the connectors back down. Now we're gonna line it all up, and then we're just going to reapply our three screws that hold the board to the front shell. Now we're gonna grab our rear shell and we're just gonna go ahead and pop that in place. We're gonna go ahead and pop the six screws holding everything in place. If you've got your battery cover on there, you're gonna to need to make sure that you pop it off before you go ahead and finish this step.
Before we put our lens on, we're just gonna have a look at it. It does look really nice, nice and clean, and I certainly like this a lot better than the previous teal Game Boy shell that we had. We're gonna throw some batteries in here and turn it on just to make sure that screen does function properly before we get too far. And it looks like it's running beautifully. We're gonna go ahead and grab our glass lens now. And what you're gonna be able to notice is on the back here, there is a little section, a little cutout that you can peel off that will allow you to visibly see if the screen is lined up properly without actually removing the adhesive cover. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're just gonna roughly line it up in place to see if the screen looks like it's in the correct orientation. If it's not, we're gonna to have to disassemble and adjust, but as long as you've pushed that LCD as far up as possible, it should be proper. Now we're just gonna go ahead and remove the adhesive cover. Be careful if you're using a knife to remove the adhesive cover. If you're not careful, you can scratch it and then you'll damage your lens. Then we just line it up and apply some pressure to put it into place. Our last step is to add this Game Boy Color Light rear label to the back of our shell. You just have to peel it off and stick it in place. And there it is. So now we've got our completed Game Boy Color Light and it looks absolutely fantastic. All that's really left for us to do is to get some batteries in, throw a game in there and give it a test run. Sorry about the lighting here, guys. I turned off all my lighting kits so I can get a much better view of the backlit screen. And I thought, what better game to play with a Pokemon-themed Game Boy Color light than Pokemon Blue? As you can see, the color looks absolutely fantastic. And keep in mind that this is running an original Game Boy game, so I don't have all the colors present. But the backlight on the screen is absolutely fantastic. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the best ones on the market. There's a whole whack load of uh, backlight options for the Game Boy Color. This is above and beyond the best one that I've had my hands on or that I've actually seen. This is definitely one that I'm going to recommend. Just going to remind you guys, all the links are in the description down below. But that's all I've got for you for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys again real soon.